Hey booktube, it's Peg. I'm back here at the History Shelf. Um, it's been about a week uh, since my last video. Um, gosh, um, time flies, uh, but it, I'm here for a Friday Reads. Um, it's been a busy work week and <clears throat> I'm feeling physically better. Um, but been kind of overwhelmed with, uh, just life stuff and work stuff and, uh, reading stuff. Um, gosh, I don't know where to begin. However, um, I came home tonight, uh, to a lovely surprise in the mail from a very dear friend. Let me show it. Who could it be? Oh, we know these packages, don't we? This is from Steve Donahue. Thank you, Steve, so much. I, I opened up the box, but I haven't pulled the books out because I thought I would do this on video to share with all of our bookish booktube friends. Um, so, wow, this couldn't have been better timing. I've been repeatedly ill and sick, and uh, <clears throat> I'm getting over it. I still have a little bit going on, but uh, mostly now I'm just dealing with the the mental blues of uh, having been sick for so long. I, uh, and I'm not getting enough sun. Uh, I've started taking vitamin D supplements for the drops and stuff just to uh, try to to get out of this this funk. Um, I have like a brain fog going on. <laughs> um, and then um, you know because we've both been sick here, and uh, Martine went to the doctor today. <clears throat> after struggling for so long, valiantly, but it um, uh, turns out after chest x-ray, she has bronchitis. So, uh, at least we have that diagnosis. I'm starting her medications to try to, to kick it. Um, she's very tired, and she's been working a full-time job with all of this and working so hard. <sighs> I just want her to feel better. <laughs> And she will. Um, so, you know, we've just been dealing with that and uh, work and deadlines and, you know, uh, yeah. So I'm, I apologize for not having made a video in a week, but, you know, life life happens. Um, but and then I come home to this wonderful package from Steve. So I can't wait to, I'll open that up for you guys. That'll be part of my Friday reads. Um, uh, and let's see, just a couple of other updates to incorporate into my Friday reads. Um, I did get this in the mail because I did decide at the last minute to order it. And not just because of the uh, read along or sag along in um, uh, next month, February, in a couple days actually. Um, but I'm getting, I've been wanting to read this anyway. <laughs> I've really been getting into the Norse, uh, you know, mythology stuff and uh, uh, recently read a. <clears throat> A fiction book that was set in Iceland and I'm just kind of like getting intrigued by Iceland all things Iceland so I've got my copy of the sagas of the Icelanders it's this beautiful uh, penguin deluxe edition gotta love the deco edges and uh, yeah so uh, we're starting that very soon so that came in the mail I also wanted to show you guys real quick something I got in the mail um, uh, the Folio Society, uh, every New Year's, has its New Year's uh, sale, which is epic. And that's really where the majority of my collection comes from, is when that's when I can afford afford it. Um, so this time around, I just only got one volume. But, uh, hang on, let me get up. I'm very excited for this, to add to my collection. Uh, this is A Writer at War, um, Vasily Grossman. And as you know... A lot of us have been uh, talking about his books, The Life and Fate, Stalingrad. Um, but I've been trying to collect a lot more of his work. And this one, I'll just sliding it out of the case for you. Look at this one. It has an, it's edited and translated by Anthony Beaver and Lyuba Vinogradova. So there you have that. Um, this one is just, as you can just tell by the, the coloring here, that... It's uh, replete with photos, um, illust period illustrations, uh, this is him covering World War II, um, 
Oh, wow. This is pretty cool. So it's, it's very, uh, it's broken up with a lot of different photo period, you know, period photos and, uh, all of his journalism that he did during the, uh, during the uh, invasion of 1941, German invasion. Um, this is going to be great. It's got big maps. But uh, again, this is a beautiful folio edition. I got it on the New Year's sale. This this was $21. Now, you do pay an arm and a leg for shipping because it is coming from overseas. Uh, so uh, with the with the shipping, the shipping itself was the price of the book. So it was like $40. But um, yeah, isn't this awesome? Adding to my collection. And uh, Vasily Grossman's work is on my list of... Thank you. It's Vasily, isn't it? She's there to always catch me when I fall. <laughs> Bronchitis or no, uh, Vasily Grossman. And I could have sworn that some Russians are called Vasily or Vasily. Or no? Vasily. Vasily. You know, I'm still, maybe I need some medication as well. All right, so those are the two books that are like, the big ones I wanted to show you guys um, before I open Steve's package. Um, you know, I'm just trying to catch up with you guys. It's been a week. Um, oh, I thought I'd show you something else. I just I just subscribed to this, and it took about three or three weeks for it to arrive. I don't know if any of you guys read this or subscribe to Book Forum. It's a uh, bi-monthly. This is December, January. Just a nice big kind of fold-out full of books and reviews, you know, um... Uh, uh, I don't know. It's just, this one's got what's driving the true crime craze, which is a great question. Uh, <laughs> speaking of that, I've been roped, uh, sucked into a, a series on, um, I don't know how many of you have, like, Amazon Prime. Most people do Amazon Prime video, but <clears throat> for, like, five bucks a month, you can subscribe to the British stuff, like Acorn TV. And Martine got me hooked into the show called Line of Duty. Oh my gosh. It is so good. We've been watching a lot of that this week. I think I've just been, since I've been in such a funk, I've just been kind of wanting to zone out. And again, I don't know why I'm watching these these uh, detective detective shows. I, you know, I, I like mysteries and detective stuff, so I guess it all goes with it. But um, anyway, book forum, you guys. Pretty, pretty neat stuff. Um, I thought this was neat on the back. I wanted to show you guys this. These Harper Perennials, these Olive Editions, they are for a limited time only. And I remember showing you guys that I picked up Careless in Red, that one right there, uh, from my bargain book um, online ordering site. And uh, But they have more, and they're really neat-looking covers. we got Moriarty by Anthony Horowitz. They're only $10 each. Um, Death at uh, La Fenice by Donna Leone. I mean, there's um, Gaudy Knight, Dorothy Sayers. So these are kind of neat additions, and they're only $10, limited time only. Anyway, book form, you guys, if any of you are interested in staying up to date with the newest releases and, and book reviews, um, give it a try. I, I, I just started. I'll let you know what I think. Okay, so let's get to Steve's box, shall we? <clears throat> this must be a Steve care package, and this is a great care package. Thanks again, Steve. You're the best. And you know what? It's also very heavy. So I know he likes to say, he sends me chunk. Here, oh, here's a chunkster. Oh boy. I, I don't know what these are. I haven't. What is this? Oh, I saw him show this on his channel recently. Yes! From Peoples and to Nations A History of Eastern Europe by John Conley. Oh, this is. Oh, yeah. This is a, this is a big one. This is a chunkster. This is about 800 pages minus the, uh, with, with the footnotes and bibliography, it's 956 pages. I, I saw, Steve, that you, you had this on your channel, and I was like, oh, this looks meaty. It looks good. I'm all about it. Let me know if um, you've read it. I'm guessing you have in a day, probably. <laughs> um, uh so this will be another book I will attempt to get a uh, book review on. <laughs> I'm, 
I'm working through Thatcher. Oh. Boo. See, I did it for her. And she has bronchitis. <laughs> and um, I got about 400 pages left on that one. Let me know if she has a change of heart. I will let you know if she has a change of heart. I don't know. I'm learning. Uh, sorry, I got a little sidetracked there. Um, so I'm working through Thatcher, and then I, I'm working through Revolutionary Brothers about Lafayette, Marquis de Lafayette and Jefferson. Interesting thing about that book is <clears throat> the whole book is a premise about their friendship and how their friendship for, helped forge two nations. They've only just exchanged letters for the first time on page 130. I'm 130 pages in. The rest was all set up, I guess. But um, so, okay, so I'm getting to the meat of it now, but I will be writing a review for that book as well for Steve on Open Letters. But this, this is, this is a, look at, the, look, just look how wide that is. That's, that's going to look, excuse me, I am all <clears throat> beclemped here. This is going to look good on those shelves behind me. So thank you, Steve. Next book. Looks like I have four books in here. No, five. Holy crap. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, this is the book he said he was sending out to me, The long, so the Sickly Person in the Western Territories. That would be me. Um, Suffrage, Women's Long Battle for the Vote by Ellen Carroll Dubois. Uh, and this will be a nice speedy read. Oh, I know how much Steve loves these stickers. I love when he goes on a rant about these stickers. As he likes to say, apparently the name of this book is Review Copy, Not for Resale. <laughs> ah, anyway, so this book is by Simon & Schuster, or it's published by Simon & Schuster. Um, this looks fabulous. It's been a while since I read a book on, like, um, well, the last book I read that I wrote a uh, review for him was on equality. Um... 1866 to 1896, I think. And um, But this one's going to be all about the women's movement or long battle for the vote, suffrage. And um, trivia time, which was the, uh, the, first, um, the first state to uh, grant women the vote. One, two, three, four... Okay, I was gonna. I was gonna sing the Jeopardy tune. That would be Wyoming, ladies and gentlemen. It was a Western territory that gave women the the vote for the first time. So yay, Western states! Woo! Thank you, Steve. This looks awesome. I love the cover. I like the. I like the cover. I like this artwork. It's just pretty. It's pretty cool. Okay, moving on. What do we got here? Oh, yes! He told me he was going to send this my way, but I didn't know he had received a copy of it already. This is Tom Clavin's new book on Tombstone. Yes, the er Earp Brothers, Doc Holliday, and the Vendetta Ride from Hell. Um, this is the Advanced Reader's Edition. This comes out in April. Uh, oh, good, so this gives me time. I will be writing a review. Um, he, uh, Steve asked if I could... Uh, said he would send this my way so I would review it and you know I will. Um, Tom Clavin has written on Dodge City, he's written on Wild Bill, and I do want to get his other books or I want to read them at least, um, Wild Bill especially. But uh, yeah, the dramatic true story behind Tombstone. And uh, as we all know, there's the shootout, the OK Corral. You know, this is so funny. I feel like a lot of my life, in, in many ways, I, I've come full, full circle. Um, when I was a little girl, and uh, actually, well, probably 10, yeah, I was a little girl. Uh, between the ages of like 10 to 16, I was in a huge Old West phase. Oh my gosh, I read every Louis L'Amour paperback. Uh, I watched every Western. I was a huge John Wayne fan. I watched all of his movies. I had a John Wayne clock. I, um, <laughs> I was, I had audio cassette, I had the audio, um, like the dramatizations of Louis L'Amour stories on cassette tape, and I still have them. And now I've transferred a lot. Well, I, I bought a few of them in CD just to listen to them for like nostalgia. Um, 
But oh my gosh, I was, I had the whole Time Life series on the Old West, you know, it had like that fake faux brown leather uh, covers, and I, and one of them was called The Gunfighters, that was my favorite volume in the series, hands down. I would look for hours at these pictures of the brothers, like, and there's Wyatt, and there's Morgan, um, uh, that's Virgil, and then you got Doc Holliday over here, but I, I used to know this stuff inside and out about all these guys. Uh, even, uh, what was it, John Reno? Um, Johnny Reno, I think. Oh, well, I thought it was Reno. <laughs> Ringo. Yeah, Ringo, because he, yeah. So, um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm getting back into it, and I kind of moved away from it. But um, this is going to take me back to a period of my... Um, when I was when I was younger, that I was really just like, oh, I'm gonna be a cowboy, <laughs> not a gunfighter, but I don't know. I just thought it was what a neat time to be alive as a man, <laughs> because you know, being a woman back in that time would not have been you know fun. But these guys pretty much were able to you know, I don't know, do whatever they wanted. <laughs> I don't know. It's just that whole, you know, whenever you see a Western, people really dig it. It's just that sense of freedom, getting on a horse and, you know, riding around. You're your own boss and that kind of stuff. But anyway, I don't know. I don't know how to explain the allure of the Old West but and these stories. But, yeah, thanks for letting me just ramble on about that. Um, thank you, Steve. I'm very much looking forward to reading this and writing a review for you. Okay, so we've got two more. Oh my gosh, I was just thinking about buying this book today. I was just, I had just printed up a book review from the Wall Street Journal on this book because I wanted to, to read the review and see and learn some more about it. But I, this was on my list of, yes. How did you know, Steve? How did you know? Fred Kaplan's The Bomb. Presidents, Generals, and the Secret History of Nuclear War. Um... This is a pretty, this looks like a pretty good uh, read. It's a little bit less than 300 pages. Um, I recently uh, finished a, well, back when I was in school, about a year or two ago, I took a class on the Cold War and the, and then the, how the, the you know, the, the, the diplomacy around the making of the bomb, the secrecy involved, um, um, the gamesmanship between you know, America and Russia, like Soviet Union knew that we were making the bomb, but how much did they know and how much did, did we hint? And I don't know, I'm just fascinated by this whole um, period, um, especially after I took that class. And then when Steve showed this book, I was like, oh, that's something I would like to read. And then I saw the book review in the Wall Street Journal, and I just printed that up to read later, and, uh, and here you are sending it to me. I got it. Whoa! All right, so I have a, t again, I'm still, I'm working through a stack of books to review for Mr. Steve. I'm trying not to get too stressed out that I have a lot of books to review for Steve. <laughs> okay, so final book. Oh, is this a, uh, oh, this looks like an advanced review copy. Oh, I didn't even see the front until I showed it here. Oh, I've been wanting to read this. I have been following this guy on Twitter, Roger Morehouse. This book, this is the um, this is the American cover and the American title. Uh, but for the longest time on Twitter, I've been following it's. I think it was Fight or Flight, is the British title, and people have been um, enthusing everywhere uh, on social media about this book. So some of my friends over in the UK and elsewhere have already read it and love it and I think it is under the title fight or flight um, and it's about Poland 1939 the outbreak of World War II this is coming out of um, this is from basic books and of course Roger Morehouse is the author this is coming out um, in America on May 5th great so at least two of these books I have a little bit of time um, so I can try to time when I need to start reading them and get the reviews done, but this is another one that I wanted to get. I was going to buy this book. So uh, thank you, Steve. You have hit a home run with all of these books. These are fantastic, and you've cheered me up greatly. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, 
what a kind man. You know, guys, you, you really need to give Steve a break out there. He really is just the salt of the earth. Thank you, sir. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna let me just hold up the Steve pyramid. This is my my I guess my get well my get well package. He must have been getting the hints from just or listening to my videos and hearing me clear my throat and sniffle and and look at that. Yeah, this cheers me up so much. Ah, I love it! And these are all books I've really been wanting to read. Wow, guys. So, yeah, that's my Friday reads as far as um, what I am reading, what I have received, what I um, will be reading soon. Again, I am working on some books right now. Oh, I have another update for you, obviously. Um, so... A while ago, I volunteered to be a, a booktube prize judge for the nonfiction category, and that has officially begun. We went from a very long list and voted on our 20 picks to, um, you know, proceed to the next round. And so there is a list of 48 that came out, the long list, and I am selected for the first round. <laughs> so I have a lot of reading right now, so I do apologize if I am... Uh, slow to move through, make progress on the other books that I'm reading, but I basically have six books to read by March 30th. I have already started um, one of them on audiobook because you can listen, you can, the, the rules are you can, they can be uh, ebook, they can be, you know, print, audio, as long as you know you're really paying attention. And, uh, so one of them I've begun and I'm halfway through it already. So I'm feeling good about that. I started a second one. Now, the rules are we can't really talk about the books as far as what we think of them until after the, for the round is over um, and the, the, next, you know, the next set of books have been decided and weaned through or whatever. So I'm not going to tell you what I'm reading, but uh, just know that I am reading and I have six books and uh, a few more arrived because I, I had to get them um, so that I could start reading them. So those, those came in the mail, but I can't show them. But I will show them after the first round is over. And the good news from all of this really um, forced, not forced, but, um, you know, deadline-oriented reading is that uh, when I finish these, I might be able to, uh, well, I probably will. I'll write reviews for them and uh, see if, you know, Steve or anyone else out there would like to use the, use the reviews or even just on my blog if you guys want to check things out. Um, of course, you can reach me by all my information is, are in the show notes as far as social media go. Um, but yeah, there it's a busy reading period. And I think part of the, the thing I'm dealing with with post-sickness too is just I'm, I'm trying not to, to get burnt out. Um, I would love to know from other, uh, other you guys out there, booktubers, um, how you handle your loads you know your not just your reading loads but you know how do you balance it with your work life your home life um, whether you're sick or not um, yeah if you have any tips for me I, I, I just want to stay balanced you know and I want to maintain the love that I have of reading and learning right now I'm having so much fun with my writing um, it has really taken off in many ways I'm en enjoying writing in different formats from like, you know, I write for my job, which I enjoy, but now I'm, I'm writing book reviews and I'm loving it and I'm writing different types of book reviews and I'm learning so much and I want to just get better. But I want to also not, um, sometimes I, I can tend to overload myself. <laughs> I can tend to take on too much and, and, um, and I need to remember to take the time to you know stop and sniff the roses and, and breathe I think that's one of the things Martine tells me that a lot you know just breathe <laughs> uh, but anyway I would love any um, you know, just insights you guys might have um, for your with your channels and and the things that you commit to like we're doing the sag along you know um, if I'm able to make a couple videos for that great will I be making videos three times a week on it? No. <laughs> Will I be, you know, but, but I'd like to, 
I'd like to take part as much as I can. Um, I might have a buddy read coming up, but again, as this book two prize thing has really just uh, maybe in the next round I won't be in the next round, and then I'll I'll be freed up again, you know, to do buddy reads or or just to enjoy and take my time reviewing and and stuff like that. But right now it's it's pretty it's pretty uh, compressed the time frame, and there's a lot of reading going on and. And, uh, and there's life still going on, you know, and I want to make sure I'm taking time for my spiritual, uh, my spiritual time, my studies, the, those things have to come first. I've kind of not let the, I mean, I've gotten sidetracked a little bit and uh, I can feel it. I think that's what's adding to my, uh, my mental fog, my little bit of a low energy right now is, um, usually I'm pretty perky and peppy, um, I, th I also don't think it helps that one of the, I don't think I'm giving anything too much away, but one of the things I'm listening to for my um, book two prize, it's it's pretty heavy stuff, and it's kind of depressing. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, uh, you know, uh, hey, we've got a very sunny weekend coming up. Um, I'm taking vitamin D. It's going to be almost 70 degrees here in Denver tomorrow and Sunday, and I plan on taking my books outside, sitting in my glider in the sun, and getting, you know, just rocking back and forth, and getting the sun, and getting vitamin D, and then on Monday, Tuesday, we get a snowstorm. <laughs> That's Colorado. We'll have a 40 degree dip, and we will have snow and cold moving in on Monday and Tuesday. So, this weekend, I am going to sunbathe, I'm going to read, I'm going to uh, take the time I need, um, and make sure I get to church on Sunday, and um, just start to get well and body and mind again, just full 100%. And uh, you know what? Just knowing that there are people out there like you guys that just you all in your comments and then the, the, just the beautiful things you say and do, you're wonderful people and you cheer me up immensely. I mean, look at this. This is, this is an example. Not that anyone needs to send me books. to. Damn, you guys are just – but it just goes to show what a lovely community – the booktube is and that we've all in this little corner of youtube we've made this community and we all really care about one another and i'm just so grateful um you know i'm grateful martine's grateful because i know she's enjoyed a lot of the, the banter and the comments um we've really just been enjoying a lot of this and i want it to continue so i'm going to make sure i give myself the time to enjoy it and to rest and to read and uh, on that note, I know it's uh, about a 27-minute hmm, video, but I'm trying to make up for the week. So anyway, thanks to Steve Donahue. Thank you so much for these books. I can't... Thanks, Steve. Yep, Martine's over there saying thank you. Um, we're going to just focus on getting um, her well and everyone well and, uh, um, you know, just continuing to live life with joy. And uh, there's so much to be grateful for. And I'm grateful for you, BookTube, and all my, my friends out there. You know who you are. Um, in the comments, the, the other BookTubers, the, you know, every, every one of you who is involved in some way, shape, or form. I love you guys, and you're great. And I just wish you all of God's blessings, and I just, uh, you're awesome. So, thank you again. Uh, I will try to make a video. <laughs> Maybe when it's so sunny this weekend, I could do a nice uh, bookshelf tour if uh, maybe if Martine's up to yeah, filming me. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I'll try to make something this weekend as well. Anyway, guys, I will wrap that up here. Um, hope you're having a great night, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care, and stay healthy. <laughs> Bye, BookTube.